I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christians who grow to gigantic proportions and undertake some feats of spiritual heroism, you know, the sort of thing that the rest of us couldn't possibly do. Or we might just think of them as possessed of some awesome moral purity which sets them apart from the rest of the human race. You know, that they're somehow unapproachably and even embarrassingly upright figures that we might admire, but, you know, don't have any hope of any. Whichever way it is that we tend to think of saints, either as, you know, they super breed or as these exceptionally pure people, if we believe either of those things to be true, that somehow lets us off the hook, right? Because, you know, they couldn't possibly be as deeply flawed as any one of us. But the thing to remember whenever you read about a saint or see them in a stained glass window or look at an icon of a saint, they are not a special group within the church. The saints are not an elite core, better trained, higher ranking, the real stormtroopers of the gospel. And the reason they aren't is simply that what makes a saint into a saint is baptism. Because baptism, as a Christian, is the beginning of a distinctive human way of life. You see, when God calls us, invites us into a relationship, God gives us a vocation. And that vocation is to give ourselves in love and service to the world that all may come to know God's resurrection, life, and love. Of course, you can say no to your vocation. You can always choose a life more in keeping with your family's wishes or social conventions or um, greater security and wealth. God never forces us to say yes to our vocation. But God, who knows the secrets of our hearts, will never stop calling us, inviting us, enticing us to live the life for which we have been made. Now, many of the recognized saints, the saints of, 
you know, years gone by, were martyrs. And a martyr is, of course, someone who died because of and for their faith in Jesus Christ. The Greek word martyr <clears throat> actually just means witness. So when Jesus says, you are my witnesses, he's using the word martyr. Obviously, not all who bear witness, all who tell of God's love, are put to death, thankfully. Yet, throughout history, the most compelling witnesses are those who are willing to die rather than acknowledge the love of Jesus Christ. Now, if you read anything about the saints from long ago, they lived in very different times and places um, from ours. So perhaps it might be easier for us to relate to saints if we consider those whose lives are, if not officially named as saints, are very saints-like. Those closer to our time who've lived out their baptismal vocation to share in word and deed Jesus' love with the world. We might consider Mar Mother Teresa or the Anglican Bishop Desmond Tutu in South Africa or Dorothy Day who, attend, who was passionately cared for the poor and the workers. Martin Luther King, who uh, worked for racial integration. And uh, the Catholic Bishop, uh, Archbishop Oscar Romero from El Salvador. These are but a few names. I am sure you can think of more. I have chosen to tell you a little bit about Arthur Romero. He was a Roman Catholic priest in El Salvador during the very turbulent uh, times of the 1970s and 80s and beyond. At the time of his life in the Catholic Church, he was considered a very safe choice for preferment because he was conservative in his views and temperament, a man who worked within the system. He didn't say or do anything rash. He charted a careful course between conflicting forces. Not a man who put himself out on the edges, as we might think of, say, Martin Luther King. But over time, the Holy Spirit opened Romero's eyes and heart more fully to what was going on around him. And Romero saw how the wealthy sanctioned the, the violence in El Salvador that maintained them in their positions of power. He saw the death squads committed, who committed murder in the cities and soldiers who killed as they wished in the countryside. And when a new government, which represented a coalition of powerful interests, was elected, it was seen by many as fraud. And more and more, Arthur Romero committed himself to the poor and the persecuted. And he became a catalyst for radical moral prophecy in the church and outside of it. He truly then, while he certainly had a calling of a vocation to the priestly ministry, at, during this time, as the Holy Spirit worked in his heart, his baptismal vocation rose to the fore. And he became an outspoken defender of the poor, those who were powerless victims of the widespread violence. And this brought him 
repeated death threats. And on March 24, 1980, he was shot to death by right-wing militia while celebrating the Mass. Uh, Pope Francis um, declared him a martyr and eventually also a saint. In the New Testament, every single Christian is referred to as a saint, including all those muddled and sinful ones to whom St. Paul wrote letters. As saints here today, God calls us to be bearers of God's unlimited mercy and love, in spite of the risks. For as we just sang a few minutes ago, not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place, the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom. Now is the day. <clears throat> Too often, the popular press, such as the left behind movies and books, suggest to us that heaven is an escape from earth. And while indeed we await the full and final coming of God's kingdom among us for heaven to come down to earth, yet even now we can taste heaven. For what is heaven but God's power and presence and love here on the earth? I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus says to Martha in the Gospel. Both Mary and Martha are brokenhearted after their brother Lazarus' death. And by the time Jesus arrives, Lazarus has been dead for four days. So, like, really dead. And when Jesus asks for the grave to be opened, Martha says, already there is a stench. Lazarus, come out. Jesus cries with a loud voice, and the dead man comes out, bound in his grave clothes. Unbind him and let him go. The sign Jesus performs is a picture of resurrection life, God's eternal love and life now in the present, if only we have eyes to see and ears to hear. It's not something we have to wait for into the future. Jesus himself is the place where death ends and everlasting life begins. And the life of Jesus breaks into our present and transforms it. In sharing Jesus with others, we work alongside God's Spirit to unbind all that holds people back from life in all its fullness. It is said that Oscar Romero is the predecessor of human rights defenders in El Salvador. And his life, his death, his witness has inspired millions of people around the world to stand up for justice and fight for peace to unbind the bound and to proclaim life for all. Lazarus's new life, Jesus' resurrection from the dead, tell us that God's, that the world's death-dealing powers are no match for the God of life. And Jesus calls us, his followers, to live accordingly. And that's what saints do. They live as if the reign of heaven, the reign of God, is at hand. Because it is. Our vocation as the baptized, the saints of today, is to bear witness in word and deed to God's power and love. Jesus' resurrection life here and now. 
Pray that the Spirit will show you what that looks like in your life. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.